this kind of gas life series as I'm calling it is supposed to be documenting what I'm up to and at the moment that's very heavily medicine focused. So today as I record this it's the 22nd of April and yesterday I just finished a very difficult week of exams. My exam started off on April 1st which was a pediatrics OSCE. I made a previous video where I discussed how that went and this week was a heavy week of written exams. So we had two medicine exams, two surgery exams and two pediatrics exams, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So that gave us a total of 11 and a half hours of exams this week. You know, if you don't know your stuff, these are exams that are gonna catch you out. Very challenging, very detailed, covering a very broad range of the curricula for each respective subject. And if you, as I said, if you don't know your stuff, these are the exams that are gonna catch you out. So were they difficult? Yes, yes, they certainly were. And that's the case with all of the final med assessments, really. You know, there are many different uh, forms of assessment when you get to final year and just the amount of exams that you end up going through is is crazy to be honest from from your clinical exams when you're on placement to different assignments you have to submit to you know exams during during placement written exams and then your final year exam it's just it's a lot of assessment so this exam period we have 12 exams in total seven done and five to go okay so we're over the halfway line there's still some difficult assessments to go but this week was really the week that everyone wanted to get out of the way so i'm very happy that it's done so what was most difficult ah uh, god i don't know i suppose it, like you know it really does vary depending on your own level of preparation like i was really well prepared on monday for for medicine so that's internal medicine geriatrics and and uh, general practice I was really well prepared for that, so I wasn't too stressed about that. That went fine. Um, surgery, yeah, there were tricky parts in surgery, all right. Maybe surgery was the most difficult. Um, pediatrics was difficult, but we, we expected it to be so difficult that everyone was kind of relieved after. Like, it actually wasn't as bad as we thought it was going to be because, like, we had to write six one-page essays and there's a an endless list of topics that those essays could be on, so you have to have broad and deep knowledge just across the curriculum of pediatrics. I think the questions ended up being really fair. So uh, yeah, I felt pretty good about pediatrics, felt pretty good about medicine, felt good about surgery, but like surgery would generally be a strong subject for me. So maybe because I felt it got caught out in certain areas, I, I felt a bit more negative about that, but overall a very good week of exams. You know, I mean, very difficult but I was prepared and I'm just happy that they're done. And I mean, this, the, the kind of stereotype or general idea that like medicine is incredibly difficult, it's true, okay? You know, I, I, think, I think maybe when I started medicine that I didn't appreciate how much breadth and depth there was going to be in terms of the subjects that were studied. And now having gone through it all, I think, yeah, it lives up to the hype. Medicine is is incredibly difficult and you have to be prepared to study pretty much, you know, every chance you get, okay? And I say that as someone that didn't study all the time because obviously we've got triage here. I'm recording this video when I should be studying, okay? I'm coaching clients when I should be studying. You know, I'm producing content for triage when I should be studying. So I'm obviously working alongside medicine, which, makes it difficult for sure but that's not to say that I wouldn't benefit from studying more so it's not like I'm getting away with working on the side if I didn't do my work on the side I would just study more and I think I think sometimes when you're you're caught up in it and you know that everyone else is kind of doing the same thing you kind of forget about how much work that you're putting in but what I do is I compare back to my previous degree so my previous degree was physiotherapy which is there's no walk in the park, but just a total different level, to be honest. I think uh, maybe previously I thought uh, medicine's just another degree, you know, it can't be that hard, but it's pretty hard. Now, I do think there are people, particularly on YouTube and stuff, that totally overhype things and, and just get really excited and get a bit, you know, too worked up with a swollen head and see this on YouTube a lot where people make out like medical school is the hardest thing in the world, like they're, you know, fighting at war or something. It's not that difficult, but it is hard, okay? It's definitely 
harder than physiotherapy. Obviously, I haven't done other degrees, but you know, when you compare the amount of work that's required in terms of the amount of hours that you put in during the week, at the weekend, in the evenings, etc., it's definitely, definitely a different level. Of course, there are other challenging degrees, but I haven't done them, so I can't exactly speak to them. But yeah, here we are, final med. As I said, uh, a few exams left. What I've got left now uh, this week, I've got obstetrics and gynecology on Tuesday. And then on Thursday, I've got a situational judgment test. So it's like a professional practice assessment, hoping that you're not a sociopath uh, <laughs> or psychopath, even worse. So uh, that should be fun. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully I won't be found out. And uh, then we've got three more after that, which are our medicine and surgery clinicals. So these are exams that are intimidating in that you're being grilled by consultants in person, face to face, okay? So you're being asked questions, they're gonna keep asking you more and more difficult questions about particular topics, about cases, etc. And the questions will keep coming. So that goes on, I think, for about 30 minutes for each respective subject. And that is, that's definitely challenging, it's definitely intimidating, but I do like that. I like in-person stuff, I like, communicating. I like to think that that's one of my strengths. Um, I tend to be, you know, a relatively confident communicator in those types of situations. Sometimes I get flustered, of course, like anyone, but because it's one of my strengths, I feel a little bit less intimidated by some of those exams, but, but it's still extremely nerve wracking. The, the, the benefit is that you're in and out in 30 minutes. Okay. You're being grilled, but you're in and out. And uh, then all the only other thing that's left is the obstetrics and gynecology OSCE. So that's just an in-person clinical exam as well. Um, sort of similar, but, but not quite as intense as those medicine and surgery short cases or clinicals as they call them. We do also have uh, radiology as part of, I think it's as part of the medicine clinicals. So many exams, it's hard to keep up, but that's, that's kind of a summary of what's left. So I finished my exams on the week of May 8th or 9th, and then we graduate, God willing, on May 26th. So hopefully all going well, we get over the line and I'll be able to graduate then. And I'm, I'm really, really looking forward to that. This has been a, a very difficult four years. I've worked myself into the ground and the good thing I think is that up to now I've exceeded my own expectations, which is, which is difficult to do because I am very, very hard on myself and I, I have to keep referring back to what, how I thought I'd do at the beginning. And I remember having those thoughts at the beginning of medicine thinking, you know, you're, you're not going to be able for this. How are you going to be able to work alongside this? You know, everyone else is going to be way more dedicated than you, etc. And you know, I, I just, constantly have to remind myself that's what you thought this was going to be like and you're doing much better than you thought you would um, i'm still extremely hard on myself in that no matter what grade i get in an exam i'm still thinking ah could have done better ah you got that wrong ah you, you fumbled your words there but that's something I'm, I'm getting better at dealing with over time so on the fitness side of things i'm actually doing a really good job of keeping my health as a priority okay so i've been training relatively consistently i've been eating pretty well you know i've been sleeping pretty well i haven't been abusing caffeine too much you know he says as he sips a second coffee of the day overall i've been looking after myself and i think that's something that was especially necessary during this exam season because it's so long okay 12 exams it's not like when you have you know two or three exams in a week and then it's over and you can rest okay you, you can't just keep sleep depriving yourself and overstimulating yourself for a period of, of multiple weeks it's it just doesn't end, end very well particularly in situations where you have to be able to function at a high level cognitively and you have to be able to you know present yourself well in some of those clinical exams being able to speak clearly communicate clearly answer on the spot recall on the spot be verbally fluent etc so you obviously want to be some bit rested for those types of exams so that's where we are at the moment that's me i'll be discussing more about my hamstring rehab and everything in subsequent videos because obviously if you've been following along i did tear my hamstring again the other one recently and uh, I've been going through rehab with that. So I'm just doing you know, plenty of leg curls at the moment, doing light lower body training, trying to build up some squats again, doing some light RDLs, etc. So all of that is ongoing. Um, I am training. I'm doing you know, plenty of, of upper body work as well, obviously getting my cardio in, eating fairly well, as I said. So overall, 
pretty healthy, doing everything that I would tell my clients to do if they had a, a stressful period. And that's something that's always really important to me. I, I try to you know, ask myself, what, what would you tell your client, Gary? What would, you, what would you tell them if they were in this situation and they were asking, should they skip all their workouts because work is busy? No, of course, of course not. You know, I've got clients in far more stressful situations than my own, far more emotionally challenging situations than my own. And I was just speaking with someone recently, one of my clients who's had quite a bit of trouble with her health and she's getting reviews of, of tests and stuff and, and trying to get an update as to diagnosis slash prognosis. And what I was speaking to her about was the importance of keeping up these habits, keeping up her exercise, etc. for her, her physical health, of course, but also for her mental health during a very emotionally challenging time. So if I tell that to them, I have to follow through myself. Normally I'm not quite as good and that's just important for me to communicate to you as well because I think sometimes people get the impression that when you're a, a personal trainer or a nutritionist or one of these health freaks that you're always perfect with everything that you do. You're always on the ball, you never miss workouts and that's just not the case, okay? It's, and it's not the case for me. I would say, of course, I'm above average in the sense that I, I'm consistent with my training, I eat relatively well, etc. but I still drop the ball every now and then and certainly during stressful periods. So that's why I'm communicating to you that this time it's been going a bit better and I've been feeling better for it. And that's exactly what I'd recommend to you if you're in a similar situation. So, you know, I know I've got some younger guys uh, and girls too, I'm sure, that watch some of these videos who might have their leaving cert upcoming, for example. And what I would say to you is, look after yourself, okay? Try to get your sleep in as well as you can. Try to maintain a healthy diet. Try to get your exercise in. It will, I know it, it can be very difficult because you think to yourself, oh, but I could be studying for that hour. But you come back, you have a fresh head, and you're ready to get into the books again. And in my experience, that generally leads to better quality study periods, particularly when you have to study over a protracted period of time, whether it be multiple weeks of the leaving cert or multiple weeks of your final med exams. So I'll see you guys in the next video. I'm sorry there's not much you know, of use here from a, a health and fitness perspective. I just wanna give some insight as to what my life is like at the moment. In subsequent weeks will be back to normal with more training footage, more insight into what my diet is like at the moment, etc. Because I will be, as we come into summer now, losing fat, getting leaner, that's the goal. Okay, so get shredded for summer, as they say. And I'll give you some insight into what I do to ensure that that is a fruitful process. So I'll see you in the next video.